right? I wasn't going to make any jokes about the name of your pub. Because mm, I've heard them all, and from better 12-year-old boys than you have. I'm sure you have. So, has having to close your historic pub hit you hard? Well, not at all. I mean, I'm happy to be the one to destroy your British legacy. I feel like the new Doctor Who. Brilliant. Yes, your pub has been around a long time. Look, the only thing older than this pub is the oil we fry our chips in. I've got a dartboard here with Roman numerals on it and our cash register and abacus. It's old. It's a shame the COVID lockdowns have ended the pub's run. They made us close. Great great grand uncle Nigel kept the doors open all through smallpox outbreak of 1560s. I mean, great grand Doris had the taps flowing all through the cholera of the 1850s. We made it through Droopsies, the Croup, Bronze John. Quincy, Limbargo, I mean, you name it, we served it with a side of crisp and a lager with it. All of it. Yeah, I guess the pub has seen more than its fair share of sickness over the years. Oh, I haven't even talked about the pickled eggs. <laughs> and so it's the end of an era for you. What will you do now? Mm, going back to school. Oh, you're going to study for a new career. No, going back at the school. Drinking. I'm going to get Bronze Age drunk. Work with Majid Sadichpour, a human rights activist and the political director for the Organization of Iranian American Communities. And he said he believes that the Iranian regime will launder that money. I venture to say Iranian hospitals will be starved of, that, of, of, of resources and those resources will be taken to acts of terrorism. And some of these funds will be then funneled, some of it will be funneled to those hospitals in return. But the majority of it, at the end of the day, will go to persecute the people of Iran and exact terror on the people of Iran. The deal comes almost exactly one year after an Iranian woman, Masa Almini, died in police custody following her arrest for allegedly not wearing her hijab properly. Her death sparked anti-government protest, which became the largest show of opposition to Iranian authorities in years. Jason Berry. NTV News. Former Vice President Mike Pence pitching his strategy on communist China. His speech today comes amid surprise talks between Washington and Beijing. NTV's Iris Tao has more. In a speech given at the Hudson Institute today, former Vice President Mike Pence vowed to recognize the Chinese Communist Party for what it is if he becomes the president. Watch. We will recognize the Chinese Communist Party for what it is the greatest threat to our prosperity, security, and values on the face of the earth. China may not yet be an evil empire, but it's working hard to become one. And that's as he laid out his strategy to counter Beijing, including by boosting funding for the U.S. military and countering Beijing's intellectual property theft by limiting visas given to Chinese nationals and also to counter China's influence through decoupling from China in essential industries. He also vowed to ban TikTok on day one after ban Chinese companies from purchasing American farmland. There are some Republican candidates, including my former running mate, are abandoning the traditional conservative position of American leadership on the world stage and embracing a new and dangerous form of isolationism. I believe isolationism is just another word for appeasement on the world stage. But all this, he says, does not mean that the U.S. should isolate itself from China. And in fact, he used that point to take aim at some of the GOP candidates, including former President Donald Trump. But as Republican candidates are sounding hawkish on China, the Biden White House says it's trying to responsibly manage its relationship with China. This past weekend, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi quietly in Europe. And just today, State Secretary Antony Blinken also met with China's Vice President in New York during the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. Of course, all these meetings could be paving the way for President Biden to meet with China's Xi Jinping in the coming months. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Iris Hao, NTD News. Iris whistleblowers are accused of intentionally disclosing Hunter Biden's private tax records. The president's son filing a lawsuit earlier today. NTD's legal correspondent, Arlene Richards, brings us the details. Four days after being indicted on gun charges, Hunter Biden is alleging in a lawsuit that the IRS unlawfully disclosed his tax return information, and he blames two IRS agents. 
filed on Monday, the lawsuit alleges that whistleblower agents Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler repeatedly and intentionally shared Biden's private tax information. Specifically, it states that the two agents tried to smear the young Biden by making statements at more than 20 nationally televised interviews in violation of the Internal Revenue Code and without congressional oversight. Shapley's attorney, Tristan Levitt, told Fox News... Maybe he should have paid his taxes. What you see here is that Hunter Biden's attorneys are accusing the whistleblowers of releasing this information, but it was the Committee on House Ways and Means uh, that has the legal authorization pursuant to laws that Congress itself wrote. That's who released this information. Prior to that, the whistleblowers only shared broad strokes that really no taxpayer specifics. But once that information is released by Congress, just like it was with Trump's tax returns, it's public information and people can speak about it in whatever context. In June, the House Ways and Means Committee voted to publish transcripts of the whistleblowers' testimonies. These tax crimes cover an estimated 2.2 million in unreported tax on global income streams to Mr. Biden and his associates from Ukraine, Romania, and China, totaling 17.3 million from 2014 to 2019. Shapley and Ziegler testified in May. They testified that they faced various limitations during their investigation of Hunter's tax case. The lawsuit states that the agents didn't apply the same rights to Hunter as they did to every other American. Shapley's attorney says the lawsuit is an attempt to intimidate whistleblowers. We definitely aren't going to be intimidated by a frivolous attempt like this, and we hope that other whistleblowers who might potentially be considering coming forward won't be intimidated either. The IRS is not commenting on the lawsuit. Arlene Richards, NTD News. Justice. It's because the DOJ sought access to his personal email back in 2017. Patel is accusing the agencies of violating his Fourth Amendment right which protects him from unreasonable searches and seizures from the government. The lawsuit targets seven officials who were on active duty at that time. That includes FBI Director Christopher Wray and former District Attorney Jesse Liu. At the time, Patel was working as a chief investigator under the House Intelligence Committee. He was leading the investigation into the DOJ's handling of Crossfire Hurricane, a probe based on the now-debunked idea that Trump colluded with Russia to secure the 2016 election. During this election season, we could be seeing more deep fake videos targeting political candidates. A data science professor tells us about what can be done. And Congresswoman Jennifer Waxton not running for re-election next year. A Virginia Democrat represents a purple district close to Washington, D.C. Now, that method is losing its grip on our reeling economy. Provincial governments in China are in trouble as well. Most of them have run out of money, with the outstanding bill standing at over $5 trillion. <laughs> Many regions are at risk of default. The situation is also getting harder for China's educated elites. The deepening crisis in the housing sector, cutthroat competition in education, and hefty fees in raising children are making it harder for them to uphold their living standards. None of them expect the Chinese economy to get better over the next year. Avoid China. That's what investors are saying, according to a Bank of America survey. The bank surveyed investors with $616 billion in assets under management. It found that few are confident the country's economy will improve in the near future. That response is a night and day difference from February, when nearly 80% said China's economy would make headway. This shifting view has prompted a major change in where investors are sending their money, with more funding headed into the U.S. and money getting pulled out of China and developing nations. Investors cite China's real estate troubles as the number one factor that could cause the next global credit crisis. The pessimistic outlook on China's property sector also sent Chinese stock prices plunging. Mainland Chinese listings on the China Securities Index, a major Chinese stock market indicator, fell to the lowest level this year. Dark skies are on the horizon for the world's most debt-ridden property developer. Shares of China's Evergrande Group took a nosedive Monday, dropping a massive 25% in the morning. What sent investors running for the hills? Beijing may be planning a new probe into the giant. That's after Chinese police detained certain staff members who work for the company's wealth management department. 
that's reportedly headed by General Manager Du Liang, also the unit's legal representative. Police in China's Shenzhen city confirmed the incident on social media, saying they took criminal compulsory measures against Du and other suspected criminals at Evergrande. The statement didn't say how many were detained, what charges were imposed, or when they were taken into custody. The incident follows the company's return to public trading after a 17-month suspension through August 28th. A bigger-than-ever housing crisis is looming over China. The nation's largest private property developer, Country Garden, now on life support as investors and buyers back out of the real estate industry. Over the years, the company has spent much of its efforts building up the epicenter of China's real estate sector, rural cities and industrial areas. And that sector drives China's economic growth. But what's behind the downturn? The answer, debt-laden local governments and a mass exodus of residents. Just two years ago, China Evergrande Group, another property giant, popped the regime's real estate bubble after flourishing in borrowed money for decades. The housing industry contributes about a quarter of China's GDP. Economists predict that China's real estate crisis will likely be prolonged. More on China's real estate crisis. Last month, housing prices dove to their cheapest point in almost a decade. Beyond that, data on the cost of new homes is also seeing a downturn. What caused the nationwide decline? Experts point out three factors. Low purchasing power among buyers, low profit expectations, and that the supply of homes now exceeds demand. Back to the declining data, housing prices are facing a 15 to 25 percent drop according to real estate agencies. And that figure even holds for high-end communities in China's major cities, which are supposed to be more stable. The data shows a notable contrast compared to China's official data, which reflects the biggest price drop at just 6%. China's official statistic bureau relies on surveys of market research, which may not be transparent or up-to-date. Last month, investments in China's property <coughs> also fell by almost a fifth. That's despite recent strategies and measures from Beijing to counteract the fall, like cutting the mortgage rate and reducing the minimum for down payments. Worth noting, Beijing set a 5% GDP growth goal for the year early in March, but its economic woes are progressing with only three months left to recover before 2024. And more on the money front, China's central bank just lifted temporary curbs on gold imports last Friday. Experts warn authorities often stockpile gold while preparing for war, and that Beijing may be gearing up ahead of potential sanctions that could get slapped on the country because of it. Some liken the situation to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moscow chose to link gold with its currency, the ruble, as to cope with depreciation under Western sanctions. Back to the latest ban removal, the restriction was originally levied to stabilize China's currency, the RMB, also known as the Yuan. Instead, the decision sent precious metal prices in the country spiking. Now, the largest gold buyer year to date, China owns over 18,000 tons of gold. Switzerland is China's biggest gold source overall. In June alone, gold shipments to China exceeded 40 tons, with Beijing's total for the month hitting about 100 tons. Beyond that, Russia has become one of China's preferred gold importers due to discounted prices from Moscow. Chinese investments in Brazil are at their lowest in over a decade, plunging by almost 80% in 2022 compared with the previous year. That's despite China's status as Brazil's largest trading partner. Last year, China funneled $1.3 billion in investment dollars into the country. That's the lowest the number has been since 2009. A chief strategist at Clock Tower Group says China isn't the driver of emerging markets anymore due to a struggling economy. The Council on Foreign Relations says China usually invests in Latin America to expand its political influence in the region. U.S. officials previously raised concerns about that. Admiral Craig Fowler, the former head of U.S. Southern Command, wrote in 2021, we are losing our positional advantage in this hemisphere and immediate action is needed to reverse this trend. 
A quiet meeting of top U.S. and Chinese diplomats in Malta over the weekend. Experts say the session could help smooth the path for leaders Joe Biden and Xi Jinping to meet in November. What's next for China-U.S. relations? Let's zoom in. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with China's top diplomat Wang Yi in Malta over the weekend. The White House says talks were candid, substantive, and constructive. Some issues discussed were global and regional security, the war in Ukraine, and Taiwan. Sullivan reportedly noted the importance of peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait during the meetings. Taiwan's defense ministry said today that it detected over 100 Chinese aircraft and nine warships around the island after the visit. It called the number a recent high. A Biden administration official says talks showed limited early signs that military communications between the two countries could start to be restored. The White House suggested more meetings between the U.S. and China will come over the next few months. China's top diplomat is on the road again. Wang Yi is starting a four-day trip to Russia on Monday. He will meet with Secretary Council Secretary Nikolai Petrushev and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. The visit is expected to strengthen political ties between the two nations. Wang is expected to lay the groundwork for Putin's visit to Beijing for the third Belt and Road Forum, following an invitation by regime leader Xi Jinping earlier this year. The equipment company that the government put forward, and they just collapsed on their own incompetence and lack of product capability. How do we read this potential political move and announcement of this breakthrough that China's claiming? Yeah, this is kind of funny. If this is an effort to flex and say, look, your tariffs, your blocks, your uh, entities lists didn't stop us, so give it up. Uh, which, which is kind of what I think this is. This is kind of a, a, a show of bravado. This may backfire because some people are now saying, well, we got to tighten the sanction. There are some warnings or reports coming out, even with Mike Gallagher, chairman of the House Select Committee on the CCP, saying that China's current economic woes could potentially mean a danger for Taiwan and also the U.S.'s own financial system. What's your take on all of that? Look, this is a global ecosystem. If China fell into economic collapse, anyone cheering in America would be a fool because this is an interconnected, interdependent system that was supposed to maintain peace. So it's almost a mutual assured destruction, though. It's why China doesn't want to see us collapse economically because we're making our stuff there and we're selling our stuff there. And John, given how intertwined or entangled the world economies are, especially say the U.S. and China, and with the potential tensions around Taiwan, what is the solution here? Well, the solution is that either Chairman Xi has to take a different course, or China has to take a different course and say, things were pretty good from 1980 under Deng Xiaoping. I think under the current regime, the country's taken a turn to say, Uh, hegemony, power, influence over other countries is the goal. And uh, as long as they're following that route, it's going to hurt the people of China. It does seem often when totalitarian or communist regimes are talked about, their greatest fear is the people waking up and speaking out. How do you read the current societal climate in China? It certainly became clear that at the first tear in the fabric, people couldn't wait to get out and, and, and experience freedom. They've gone to school in uh, Europe, in the U.S., and other regions, uh, Japan now, and Korea, they know what's out there, and they see how they're living now. And the idea that uh, you don't want to be starving anymore, well, the, the young people in China haven't seen starvation, and, and so they're not terrified. Indeed. Well, John Pelson, thank you so much for your time. It could be in here again, Tiffany. That's all for today's China. It's like mango, passion fruit, or acai. But the main ingredients are really water, grape juice concentrate, and sugar. They claim they paid for the fruit drinks under the assumption there would be real fruit in them. Some people are using TikTok to watch movies before they even hit the streaming services. According to the Wall Street Journal, full-length movies and TV shows are being shared on TikTok in short clip formats. Clips are about three minutes long, allowing users to watch in a continuous string. Some Hollywood lawyers say the pirating of movies and shows on TikTok is a violation of copyright laws. Of course it is, but some entertainment companies may be slow to react 
because the short clips might be helping these movies and shows gain popularity. An 86-year-old is behind bars, accused of child pornography. We'll tell you how investigators caught the suspect. Well, we're in the heart of the tropical season, and right now we go over Mexico. Clean, long, and prosper, Lyle. Clean, long, and prosper. Lyle, the space janitor, everybody.